Big game coming up against the Arizona Cardinals. But before we get to that big game, we got some big questions from y'all. First one came from my guy, Gareth, who is a Team Keep It Clean patron. And shout out to the Team Keep It Clean patrons. He said, hey, anyway, I haven't sent a question in a while. How are you and the family? We are doing excellent. I appreciate you, and I hope you're doing even better. Uh, he said, I really hope everything is well. Do you think if we trade for King Henry, does this mean we have enough to get to the Super Bowl? Now, look. Even before the Baltimore Ravens, if they were or are to trade for Derrick Henry, I think they already have enough to get to the Super Bowl. I think they are a very well-equipped team with nice depth uh, that has enough to make it to the big dance, to the big game, um, and to win it, too. Because Making it is one thing, but winning it is, an, is another. Uh, so I think they have enough already. But you add a King Henry or whoever they end up adding via trade, if they do trade for somebody, I expect them to, but we'll see. But I think they have enough already, but you can never have enough talent. Uh, you can never have enough quality depth. So, yeah, Derrick Henry would just make them that much stronger. And then he said, and which of these two players would you sign, Geno Stone or Patrick Queen? Um, as always, thank you for being a great person you are. Uh, there are big things for you in the future. You're talented, and thank you for always lifting my mood up when I feel down. Hey, I, I appreciate that, man. I, I don't do nothing crazy. We ain't got no, ta no talent nothing like that. We just sit here talking behind the camera, and that's it, man. But I, I appreciate you for sure. Now, back to your question. Um, with Geno Stone, between Geno Stone and Patrick Queen, uh, which one would I sign? You know you know me. I would sign everybody. I would keep both of them, but um, probably Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen, because Ravens already have somebody in the secondary, that being Marcus Williams, and I would just really have to hope that he stayed healthy moving forward because I don't want to look back and be like, man, ah, we should have kept Geno Stone. Next question came from my guy, Cody. He said, hey, man, love the videos. Appreciate it, Cody. He said, just watch the new video on our interest in Derrick Henry. I think it could potentially go bad if we go and get him. We just filled our wide receiver room to the brim, and our offense is a lot more pass-oriented now. We aren't necessarily a run-first team anymore. So is it really a good idea to trade for a running back getting over 50% of the snap? count in Tennessee would love to hear your opinion well uh something that got brought to my attention which I didn't even really think about um one depth one quality depth or I guess that's one a one b but two playoffs playoffs in that cold weather and in the cold weather you know it's that much harder to tackle you don't want to tackle that much more so if you got to deal with Derrick Henry like dealing with Gus Edwards alone that's that's tough enough but then you got to deal with a Derrick Henry too like think about how opposing teams would just They'll be breaking tackles all day long, especially in the cold, especially in the snow game and the winter game. Like, that would play to the Baltimore Ravens' advantage. Uh, and then just give them another weapon. So I, I don't really see it going bad uh, in that sense because it just makes them stronger. Next question came from another patient, my guy Dominic. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you are having a wonderful day so far, and the fam as well is good. So I just wanted to touch on something that I don't think is getting noticed about this new offense, and that is the amount of available checkdowns. Oh, yeah, talk about it, baby. He said, uh, I, I don't know if anyone else noticed it as well, but those checkdowns actually go a long way in using the running backs more and letting them make something out of nothing. To me, I actually see the running backs getting schemed open, which is crazy because they be so wide open on those plays as well. Let me know if you see this as well. That's a really good point. Them checkdowns been making a big difference. Justice Hill been getting them like crazy. Uh, Gus Edwards been getting them here and there. But, yes, they have been working a lot. And it just opens up the offense that much more. This question came from my guy Raven Pride. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and the fam are well. Uh, well, you know I got a good one, so let me lay it on you. I believe this game against the Lions was a must win because that game well, that game told us if we were in the mix with some of the top teams that they call uh, that they call the top teams, and the Lions were definitely one of those teams. Much love to Team Keep It Clean. Well, hey, there we go. So I guess Ravens are one of the top teams. I still, for Ravens, uh, I would put them right now maybe at like – Let's see how they do against some Cardinals, man. Let's let's see if the Ravens, like, if they're consistent and they actually take care of business and do not play down to competition against Arizona. Uh, if they really take care of business, then I'll probably put them at, like, maybe like number three or four or something like that. Uh, maybe like four or five right now. I can't put them too high right now. Next questions came from my guy, Jarvo. He said, uh, watch a video about the upcoming decisions EDC has to make this offseason. So here's my question to you. If you were EDC, which upcoming free agent would you uh, try to get a deal with first? And what order would you go in as far as getting a deal done with a player? I can see Patrick Queen leaving since we drafted Trent Simpson. Uh, much love to you and your fam and always keep God first. Hey, appreciate that. Man, I, I honestly forget a lot about Trent Simpson. I, I completely forget about him because he's been on special teams. And I just we haven't seen him on defense like hardly at all, if at all. Um, but anyway, um, order of that I would do it in uh, probably matter BK first because that would be the most expensive, uh, and then Patrick Queen, and then after that, um, oof, I mean, 
Yeah, though, if I could hang out those two, and then I, I wouldn't even worry about the rest for now. I, I just worry about those two first and foremost. And if I can get that done, then the rest would be uh, the rest. But he also asked, uh, watch your take on us trading for Derrick Henry. And I was wondering, if we did trade for him and try to resign him, how would that impact the other running backs moving forward? I mean, if they traded for Derrick Henry, then that would already let the other running backs know, like, you would be taking a back seat. Like, cause that that's business, eh? uh, and he said also if we trade for uh, Daniel Hunter or anybody, how would that impact us resigning our soon to be free agents? Well, again, it's business. It's business. If Ravens traded for somebody, especially somebody like Daniel Hunter, then that definitely that wouldn't just be no rental, in my opinion. Derrick Henry, I think, could be a rental, but the Daniel Hunter, somebody like that, I don't think he would be a, a rental. Um, so I just put everybody on notice. And make everybody have to play that much harder. Make everybody really earn their keep that much more. So it make their jobs that much tougher, but easier at the same time. But the side question, is there a, a player that you can see us getting that nobody is talking about? If so, who? Oh, man, my guy. Shout out to my guy Noah from For The Flock. Because I, I, I love how he presents. Like I always say, man, I, I feel like he is the best Ravens content creator that's doing it. Uh, he is amazing because he does some of everything. He does uh, the latest and breaking news. He does film. Film study too. Uh, he does the rumors. He he does literally everything. So shout out to Noah from For the Flock. But what he presented, a lot of times he'll present stuff that will be outside the box, stuff that I won't even be thinking of. Um, and I mean it's easy for me not to think of stuff because this this brain is only so little. But anyway, um, what he he had been the one suggesting uh, Josh Jacobs, and I'm like, man, that, that is a good one because he'd been healthy. We've been missing that from our running backs. But another running back that he brought up was Alvin Kamara, and I'm like, man, Alvin Kamara, like. Literally fits this offense perfectly. His style, his style of being patient, um, his catching out of the backfield, like he fits this offense perfectly. So if I had to choose a player that nobody's really talking about, uh, it would probably be Alvin Kamar. Uh, Javo's next question, he said, is there a way we can get King Henry and Daniel Hunter? Because we know the cap is not really cap. <laughs> hey, if there's a will, uh, there's a way. Uh, he also said, who is your top five or ten most valuable players on this Ravens team and why? Uh, I, I'll go maybe top three because top five is a lot. Top ten is definitely, woo, woo, you know how I feel about top ten lists. Um, Lamar Jackson, uh, not in, in, in no order really. Lamar Jackson, Justin Tucker, uh, Roquan Smith. Um, so I, I, I just stick with those three uh, for now because the whole thing, that, that'll be too much for me to think about. That's a long list. He said, shaking my head. Uh, this is still from Javo, by the way. He said, I was on a talk show and said the Ravens reached out to him. What? No, he said SM. Oh, I think he, he meant Sue, but it, he put SMH. But he, I guess, I guess it auto-corrected to SMH. But he said Sue was on a talk show and said the Ravens reached out to him on it about a deal a few weeks ago. Have you heard about this? And what are your thoughts on adding him to our defensive front line? Oh, yeah, I'm sure you saw the video on that where we talked about Adam against Sue. Um, but, yeah, I wouldn't mind it because it shows that the Baltimore Ravens are looking to get even better, even though they're good there right now. He said, maybe it's me, uh, but it does seem like Ed Reed doesn't include himself in Ravens activities or functions. I never see Ed Reed around like I do other Ravens legends. He wasn't even at the Ring of Honor for Sizzle. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. I know him and Harbaugh kind of like had a little thing. And they, they say they're cool now. But still, even if you sometimes even if you get cool with somebody, like you'll be cool. But sometimes you still remember. You're like, oh, man, I don't like how you treated me back then. We cool, but I don't like how you treated me. So you may be like. You may be like, not even cool, you may be lukewarm. But, uh, and then his last question, he said, what a complete and dominating win, win against those Lions in front of the Ravens legends. Uh, I hate that um, Keaton Mitchell and OBJ couldn't get a touchdown, but they were close. My question for you is about Mike McDonald. Do you see him leaving us for another team next year? Because we know teams might be calling. Uh, great to see uh, Batman back in, shutting people up. Blessings to you and the family. Hope all is well on your end, fam. And next Sunday, a meeting with Hollywood Brown. Ooh, ooh. Uh, but yeah, I can see Mike McDonald being gone. I, I could see him out of there because, like, yeah, he's been an excellent defensive coordinator. It's only been – this is his second year. Uh, but he's hot right now, man, and his name will continue, especially if he continues to do what he's been doing, especially when you think about all the players that have been out at one time – it's, it's scary to think about, so I do think he could end up being gone. Ooh, that boy Javo took the whole show over, ain't he? Anyway, the next questions came from my guy, BB. He said, when the Ravens win the Super Bowl this year? I like that. He said, he ain't say if, he said when. But when the Ravens win the Super Bowl this year, do you think Harbaugh will retire and let Money Mike take over as head coach? Uh, I could see, if Ravens win the Super Bowl this year, I could see Harbaugh just calling it quits. Because that would allow him to go out gracefully, go out on time, even though he's going to be able to go out on his own terms anyway. And he already got, he's already going to be like a Hall of Fame coach and all that. He already got a lot of accolades and whatnot. Uh, but 
that would like really cement his status and he'd be set he'd be set and then he would finally be able to say hey look everybody i won a super bowl without a ray lewis and air reed on the sideline and um and he said also do you think zay is offensive rookie of the year thus far uh i don't know I don't know. He's been having uh, some nice numbers and nice impact. Is the offensive rookie of the year so far? I would really have to think about all the other rookies. So I, I, I couldn't answer that, honestly. Uh, and he said, what I was saying about a QB trade, and this was from a last question from subscriber video. He said, we both know Mac Jones is a backup at best. Justin Fields is on a team that is struggling terribly to find an identity. Uh, Hoodie, Bill Belichick, isn't going to invest any more into Mac because he has been tested with very decent quality players around him. Uh, my typo was two first rounds. It was meant to say uh, one and Mac for Justin Fields. Oh, okay, so a first rounder and Mac Jones for Justin Fields. Uh, we honestly haven't seen Justin have the opportunity with a good coach and a quality team. He has more talent than advertised, and I believe he can be more playing for an offensive-minded head coach. But ain't Bill Belichick a defensive-minded head coach, I believe. Um, so, yeah, I mean, a lot with quarterbacks is about – uh, situation that that has to do with literally everything so if somebody's that somebody could be the best of the best but they're, if they're in a bad situation uh they can look really bad so if they did that swap i don't think it's happening uh, i can see them moving off from mac jones next year one way or another but um as far as if they did a qb swap uh, you never know man next question came from deandre he said do you think andrew Voorhees, when healthy uh next season will be our new left tackle if we trade ronnie stanley i don't think at this point it's time for oh excuse me he said i think at this point it's time for a new left tackle for better protection for lamar ah uh, that's a lot of pressure to put on him like okay you're gonna be the guy at left tackle from jump um and with ronnie stanley I, again i i gotta find out how his contract is but i i nah i i don't see that i don't know uh, would they move off from Ronnie Stanley? I, I, I don't see it right now. I, I, I don't. Um, every, every time he gets hurt, I, I know the, the question comes up in our minds. Um, but it, I think everything just depends on his contract for sure. But I, I don't think I, I got to look at his contract for sure. But by, by the way that they've done every time they restructure, they go to Ronnie Stanley first. So a lot of his money has been pushed back. So if they moved off from him, they will be dealing with probably a lot of dead money. But I got to look at the exact numbers to be for certain. Next question came from my guy, John. He said, what's up, Engraven? So it hit me out of nowhere. Geno Stone is hot right now as of today. Uh, I believe he leads the league in interceptions, and I don't think he's going to resign with us. Uh, he's out after the season because he's making a name for himself. So why not, since the trade deadline's not here yet, get him for an offensive player? Uh, now we have not been able to get a consistent, be a consistent team in the red zone and scoring after the first few weeks. That percentage has tanked drastically so why not trade Geno Stone for somebody who might be on a trade block uh, offensively because we have a great defense uh, and rumors of Saquon Barkley rumors of Devontae Adams me personally I like to go with Josh Jacobs if we could uh, the Iron Man at running back or do it all running back I I'll run it back uh, our running backs have been injury prone the past three years now, but if not, then a wide receiver who's going to make those catches. Why not package Geno Stone and Rashad Bateman for a high, highly disgruntled wide receiver? What do you think? No, I, I would not do. I would not move off from Geno Stone. Reason being, Marcus Williams is hurt. Why, if Marcus Williams, him being hurt, him being injured, and you got a your backup safety playing amazing, playing amazing football for you, I get what you're saying. Oh yeah, trade him while he's hot, but you're gonna make your safety position weaker and that's a strength and and i mean if you get something you got to give up something for sure but marcus williams ain't right right now he, he's not healthy so why would you take away somebody who's hot right now uh and and then make that certainty and unknown next question came from my guy b lewis he said what's up team keep it clean family uh, you picked one of my questions before so i thought i thought i would throw out another one and see if minds think alike if great minds think alike or maybe i'm just dreaming trade deadline is coming up there are a lot of candidates but only a few that realistically can add something to our team in my opinion right now anyway uh and let me get straight to it i believe we should offer arizona a package that could involve duvernay and justice hill with some low picks to bring hollywood home <laughs> Hey, that's my guy. Y'all y'all know I, I would love for Hollywood to come back, but I don't think Hollywood want to come back. Well, maybe he would want to come back, especially with Kyler Murray still being hurt, even though Kyler Murray going to be back any day now. Um, but I, I don't think he's going to come back. I don't think he's ever going to come back to the Ravens. It would be nice, but I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, anyway, he said that him and Zay together in this offense could give us our own version of what Miami is doing with their core. I also think we can take advantage of the fire sale in Vegas and maybe grab some of the young corners like Hobbs for some slight and have an up and coming reliable second corner who could take the one when Marlon starts to tilt the other way. Just some thoughts. What do you think? Oh, you already thinking about Marlon when he start falling off? Ooh. Mm. 
That's sad. That's sad to think about. Glad we got a long way for that though. Um, you you you'll know when Marlon starts falling off when they start talking about moving him to safety. But as far as Hollywood, yeah, I, I just I would love it personally. But uh, it ain't going to happen. Next question came from my guy, John. He said, hit me out. Everyone's talking about grabbing extra players on defense. I personally don't think we need that. When Ajabo and Bowser come back, that's a who knows when that'll be. But anyway, he said, when Ajabo and Bowser come back, those are two key players in our defense. Why not go after not one, but two offensive weapons if possible? I personally don't know if it's possible or not, but <laughs> everybody on the same page, huh? He said, but why not go get Hollywood Brown back? It's not like he and Lamar don't have chemistry. And then also find a way to go get Derrick Henry, a finisher for our goal line issues. Ah, man. I, I didn't think about that. See, with the that is a good point right there. Derrick Henry on the goal line, yeah, touchdown every time. But um, I think that's about strategy, too. That's about strategy because, you know, like on a goal line, they do a lot of toss plays. Ravens do a lot of the toss plays. They do a lot of the pitch plays and whatnot. And I, I ain't a big fan of that, but that's what they be doing. Uh, so, yeah, I, if you could just run it up the gut. Do it with Gus Edwards. Why you got him? Why, why he's here? Why, like, use him like that straight up. You ain't got to get all pretty. Well, though. Let's pitch it to the left. Let's pitch it to the right. Let's toss it. No, run it straight up. But anyway, and they do it, they do, do it sometimes, but. I feel like they could do it a bit more, but that's just me. Anyway, he said, that gives us two weapons to add to our offense. We have the number one defense at the current time. So even if we slip up just a little, uh, but we're still going to have a top three, hopefully by the end of the year. But to add an, to an offense like we've been saying for years, to take an offense from the bottom half to the top half to add a top five defense, we are becoming the most dangerous team in the NFL after that. What do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I wouldn't be mad at it at all. But, yeah, Holly ain't coming home. We're about a whole contract too late for Derrick Henry. Next question came from my guy, Mars. He said, Dan Graven, hope you, all, you and yours are doing well. I wanted to ask your opinion on a potential Henry trade, specifically regarding him versus other potential options. Ravens have been linked to running backs for obvious reasons, but I don't get the link to Derrick Henry. Aside from Titans being sellers, Henry is 30, about two years older than the next oldest candidate, Kamara. Other names floating out there are Saquon Barkley, Josh Jacobs, Dalvin Cook. Personally, I don't find the Henry move to be the best out of these options. Yeah, I, I think Kamara. Kamara will probably be the best option. The, the way he fits. But anyway, he said he's already seen 20 to 30 carries a game for the past four seasons, if not longer. His play has visibly regressed on the Titans, and I know their offense is a mess, but he is also splitting the snap count nearly 50-50 uh, with Spears. The dominant Derrick Henry was getting the ball on nearly every down. He was on the field for uh, daring you to stop him as he made the whole defense scared. Now, a rookie running back is pushing him for reps because he doesn't have the juice in him uh, to have those performances nearly as often. I think a big part of it is, too, uh, the Titans with Derrick Henry, they had they are very a very obvious team. What I mean when I say that is, uh, when Derrick Henry's on the field, ninety nine percent of the time they're running the ball. Um, but when they bring him off the field, ninety nine percent of the time they're passing the ball. It, it it becomes so obvious when Derrick Henry comes on and off the field if the Titans are passing or running. Uh, it, it's it's blatant. So, but if he was on the Baltimore Ravens. I don't think it would be so blatant. Well, as long as the Ravens didn't make it blatant like they did with Pat Ricard, like some for some years. Anyway, um, he said, sorry for the novel. I just think Barkley and Jacobs fit better in our offense. Uh, guys that have proven they can play at a high level without already being worn down. Well, Barkley, like, that's a lot of injuries right there. But anyway, um, he said, uh, I'm sure Henry is still good, but I don't think he's a Super Bowl addition good. Yeah, like I said earlier, I think Ravens already are, could be are a Super Bowl team. Um, but Derrick Henry would just make them stronger, like people talked about earlier, the goal line situations, um, and just the, the quality depth, uh, just in the playoffs. Um, I, I do think he could certainly help. Um, is he the best option out of all the people that you named and that were named earlier too? No, I don't think so. Again, I I, I do think uh, my guy Noah from Florida Flogger, he was on it with Josh Jacobs, would be amazing, uh, and Alvin Kamara would be amazing. I think both of those guys would be would would be even better. Uh, than uh, Derrick Henry um, So we'll see what happens in a couple days Next question came from my guy Anthony He said what's the move What's up engraving man That win over uh, the Detroit Lions What some people said was the best team in the NFL That game was fun to watch And it was a complete game After watching that What do you see happening now with the trade deadline I feel like our pass rush is doing what needs to be done So is it running back Is it cornerback If Marlowe goes down then what uh, He'll having issues holding the rock What say you GM As always hope you and your family are well And trust Oh yeah that, I see running back Especially with everything That you just named All, all the stuff That you just went through I, I, I could see it being uh, a, a running back uh, For sure um, Also I don't really see Wide receiver Not tight end um, Offensive line Nah Not really um, That's why I keep going defense I keep going defense Because I, I just I don't see them Training for anything Offensively Besides a running back um, So yeah That would be it I know some people Have said corner 
That could be, I mean, their corner's been playing excellent, but, I mean, if you can get an even excellent tur cornerback, hey, why not? Like, the more the merrier. Like, we always talk about quality depth, so I guess we'll see. Next question came from my guy, Jib. He said, what's up, Engraven? This is my first time sending a question. I'm super hyped after that Lions game. But being a Ravens fan for a long time, I'm not fully convinced yet. I love that, and I appreciate it, and I respect it. He said, I'm not fully convinced yet. Uh, because with this team, the one thing they lack is consistency. Thanks for taking the time to, for reading my question. The hashtag team, keep it clean. Appreciate that. You're right. You're a thousand percent right. And I get it. I get it. Like, hey, that Lions win was great. It was amazing. But let's see it continue. Let, let's see how you do with a much lesser, much uh, weaker team. Um, and in a way game, let, let, let's see if you play down to the competition or you rise up. Many questions on what could really put us over the top. Next question came from my guy Elijah. He said, Engraven, hope you and your family are doing well and hope everybody in Team Keep It Clean is as well. Now, I have to say, I'm impressed by uh, what I've seen from the Ravens thus far. Although, although I predicted a 15-2 and two high side and 13-4 and four as the floor, I still like our chances for hitting the ladder. Mike McDonald has been absolutely amazing, but is he really going to be snatched up before Lou? Uh, this is absolute blasphemy. This is truly unfair. How do the Bengals keep sneaking by year by year with a great defensive coordinator? Mike is only in his second year. I was fine with local media reporting to us about the possibility but when i seen it go mainstream i know the offers are probably going to be on the table rants and thoughts hey that's real right there but yeah Bengal defensive coordinator he's been doing his thing too and them Ding Bengals, they they have a um they have a playmaking defense um and sometimes they can be a little stingy uh, which is obviously a good thing for them um, but yeah, that's another one too. Uh, he said number two. They asked them all about trap game, but I feel like we already dropped our trap game to the Colts. It's crazy that I predicted that loss preseason. How is this going to be a trap game? Bulletin board material, or did we forget when they put a pic of Lamar with the caption "running back"? I think he gives them a concert in their building, a throwback. We all know. Okay, hey, I would love that. And you know, like y'all know, Baltimore Ravens—they take that stuff personally, and they don't forget about any of that. They they remember. Um, he also said, Sue, Henry, Hunter, I wanted them all. You a Raven, you a Raven, you a Raven. For the first time, I can say I'm okay with our receiving core. It's not perfect, but it's enough for Lamar. Our approach of power and speed out of the backfield has grown on me. Having Henry in the backfield, who's a combination of both, would be sensational. It will still leave questions for next season on who will be our power back for next season, him, J.K., or Gus. Uh, Mitchell will lock up our speed back. We can always sign Sue in a couple of weeks, but if EDC goes all in for Hunter and Henry, our draft will be practically non-existent. Super Bowl baby in my TD voice. Uh, sorry for the long question and rant. Much love for what you do for the flock community. Thanks for the varsity jacket plug. Going to need that for the flu season. Oh, yeah, because it's going to be cold, especially if you are up north. Uh, but yeah, uh, you you said a whole lot in this one, and and I love it, especially the part where you said Sue, Hunter, Henry, you want them all, cause that's like me, greedy, stone cold. Next question came from Nye, and he said, "Ain't hey, Graven, hoping that prosperity and peace are following you in the fam and all life fastest." I, I appreciate that. He said, "Just a thought. I know you've been talking about Gino basically playing for a check somewhere else, but." Considering that Gino is much younger, is homegrown, and has been improving on not only a season, not only a seasonal but weekly basis, why not keep him and send Marcus Williams out? Ooh. That's like, ooh. Uh, he said, Williams is undeniably a threat at the safety position when he is available. As we all agree, it's not always about ability, but availability. Geno Stone has met both marks and exceeded expectation. Why not roll with a hot hand? I understand what we have gave, given up for Williams, but he hasn't been available as promised. Very similar to the J.K. Dalvin situation. Sure, you're talented, but are you dependable? If it's me personally, I'm keeping Stone and seeing what I can get for Marcus Williams. I mean, would you want to give up a potential 2023 season league leader, league leader in interceptions? Especially if we haven't had a stud at the position since Air Reed left and retired. Uh, what are your thoughts? Maybe sending Williams out will save us enough money and cap to retain Queen. Oh, my goodness. I, I hate how you put it because the way you put it, it just, it, it makes so much sense. Oh, oh, that's tough. And I, I, I get, I get everything that you're saying. Everything, every, everything that you're saying, it makes sense. Like it reminds me of um, Carson Wentz and Nick Foles. Uh, obviously Carson Wentz, um, that was a guy. That was a super talented quarterback. Make a lot of plays. Was in MVP conversation, da, 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 da. But he'd be hurt. And he'd be hurt some more. Nick Foles came in. He was a backup. And came in, did his thing, made the most of his opportunities. And he took the team to the Super Bowl. And they won against Tom Brady and the Patriots. Um, so they ended up keeping Carson Wentz, though. And then they moved off of him a couple, a couple years after that. It's like, oh, this ain't working. Um, so I mean, I would get the decision if they did. Because I get, like, availability. You talked about, like, I cannot refute anything. That you said I, I can't not, Nothing that you I, I can't disagree with it I can't fight I can't go against it Because everything you said Make perfect sense So 
Yeah, he said, all I'm saying is high level of high level play definitely deserves high pay, but I wouldn't want to pay for inconsistent availability. Uh, he said, isn't uh, isn't it isn't what you have. It isn't what have you done or what you could do. It it's what have you done for me lately? And lately, Stone has been an absolute consistent dog. Sorry, that, that was a tongue twister. I, it, my fault. He said, just a thought. Thank you for the unmatched Ravens content and coverage. You're definitely the best NFL outside. <laughs> So you're definitely the best NFL outside, and I wish you get the recognition you rightfully deserve as you put out co consistent quality work. And like Gino, go team, keep it clean. Oh, I like that. You put out consistent quality work like Gino. Oh, okay, shout out to Gino Stone. He said, peace, blessings, and success. Nyan. Hey, this, this is this is great, man. And again, like I said, I, I, I can't argue with it at all. And last question on this special episode came from my guy, Jalen. He said, LJ and Monkey. What's up, Angel? Hope you uh, and everything is well with you and the family. Uh, this is... <laughs> You know what? I ain't even gonna edit that out. He said, uh, this is gonna be pretty lengthy, so get ready. I'm very excited about what I'm seeing with the, rela the relationship of Lamar and Munkin right now. The QB and OC relationship is one of the most important relationships when it comes to having an elite offense and team in today's game. And I think that's what we have with these two. I feel like Lamar is really growing and maturing with this season, while Munkin is beginning to really dial up this offense and bring it all together. Uh, Lamar has always been able to navigate the pocket and evade pressure, but the way he is doing it right now is just different. Instead of escaping and running for a big run, he is moving the pocket, keeping his eyes downfield, and finding open receiver for big chunks or touchdowns, while also still breaking off some big scrambles. He is looking very complete and comfortable and on the field at this point of the season. As for Munkin, I feel like he is coaching with a big picture in mind. For example, the quick pitch and short situations that he was running over and over and over, again, set up the big tight end leak play to Mark Andrews that almost went for a touchdown. Or... Early on when he kept feeding Zay those jet sweeps, that has set us up to be able to call the misdirections in the defense when we send them in motion. That's a good point. Really good points. Uh, can't wait to hear your thoughts. Sorry for the long message and blessings to you and the family. No, don't, don't apologize, man. That, that was great because you brought up some great points. And, yeah, that does make sense. And that's something that I got to think about, too, when, um, whenever I see Todd Munkin doing something. I'm like, oh, what are you doing? What's going on? Um, it can be to set up something for later on. So it's all about patience. It's all about patience. It's all about being in the flow of the game. And, and hey, they're going to be sometimes, uh, don't like what Ty Munkin is doing. Don't like what the offense is doing. I'm like, well, what's going on with that? But um, it's all part of the process. So hopefully it does lead to even bigger and better success for the offense uh, for the rest of this football season.